Hello everyone, this is Pejman Rusty and today we wanted to see together how we can uh, tune hyperparameters in a CNN model. That's a common question. Uh, every time we ask ourselves that, okay, for this model, for this architecture of the CNN, or for this database, what are the, the best uh, hyperparameters, number of filters, uh, number of um, <coughs> number of layers, and uh, and other question kernels and and so on. Okay, so here uh, we will see together how we can tune it in an automatic way. Okay, so we go uh, step by step, cell by cell, and I will explain how we can. Uh, tune these hyperparameters. Okay, so at the beginning we need some uh, some some libraries, uh, Python libraries. So let me to a little zoom in. Okay, that's more visible. So we need some uh, some library like OpenCV that we we read the um, the data on that uh, images on uh, uh, with that. So we, we can reuse the scikit-learn if we wanted to split our data to the train and, and so on. And we use the TensorFlow and especially CRUS uh, for uh, designing the CNN model. Uh, we also can use Matplotlib for some, some visualization. So that's the library, libraries that we need to import at the beginning of our, uh, our code. So for this experiment, uh, I consider the database of the, the microscopy data and microscopy images. And these microscopy images are captured from uh, with the probe uh, from the, the colon wall of the of the mice. So we have two classes, two class, classes, uh, healthy and uh, unhealthy or cancer. So the, some there are some uh, some of the ma uh, uh, some mice uh, that we we uh, they are, they have cancer and the rest are are healthy no normal uh, in in control uh, mice okay so we wanted to read it so I put the the database in my Google Drive and here I will just connect to to my Google Drive okay by this by this comment. To, to read it. Oh, it said that okay, that's already mounted. So and that's the uh, the pass or directory of my my data. Okay, so the data clone binary uh, the zip uh, and I will unzip them here. So as I already read it, read them once here. So it asked me, do you want to to replace uh, them? With the with the one that is already there. If you do this for the first time, you will not see such a this uh, this, this message. I say yes. Do this for for all, okay? And it just uh, unzip them here. And in my case, it replaced with the with the images that already uh, uh, imported to the to the to the notebook. Okay, so. Uh, in the database, so we have two uh, two subfolder. In the folder of the database, we have two subfolder. Uh, subfolder for images of the train. Uh, subfolder for the images of the of the test. Okay. So we give the name of the each subfolder. So we uh, data uh, data directory of the train, and from them we say that okay, go and read all the subfolder in this uh, train folder that exists. Okay. So it goes and says that okay, there's a cancer, there's a sand, uh, this is a, it's good to he healthy, uh, and we, we have something that we don't really need it. Okay, it came when we, we zipped it and we when when I zipped it, it, uh, it appeared there, but we don't need it. So what we can do, we can just say that okay, we need this, the first class and the second class. So we read them, and then for the test, we do the same. Okay and we put them in the category test. Now that we have the directory of the data, we are in each uh, subfolder, we have a couple of uh, images, uh, and we wanted to, now we wanted to read it. So at the beginning, we define a size for the images. So as you know, the, all the images that we, uh, uh, we fit to the, to the CNN model uh, should, uh, have the same, uh, should have the same, same size. 
okay so here we consider 256 by 256 but it can be any any size okay it's depend to, to your data and that's a function that goes in each subfolder give them index to each uh, each classes uh, 0 or 1 so this is the binary classes if you have more than by two classes uh, you can use the same function you don't need even to change it but it it read it for for more three four or or, or more uh, more classes okay so that's all right here and now we just call the the function okay so we give the path of the train and we give the category of the train and it go to the function and read it for us it says that we have uh, 2052 images in the train database in the first class and the, the second class okay so we do the same for the testing we read them okay and then uh, the next step is just to prepare them to fit to the to CNN model. So we need the labels in one variables, we need the images in another variables for train and test. So for that we have a function. Okay. And with that function we can we can do this easily. Okay. And also it reshape it to the size that we, we need to send it to the class. Here we just call them. So for the X train by train, so we give the training data. Uh, for the X test by test, we give the testing data. And then uh, we print and uh, we see the, the size of the, the database. Okay. Redeem, I said that for the training database, we have, as we saw before, 2052 images in two classes. And the size of them are 256, 256 by 3. The, three, the, the number of channels RGB. Uh, for the test database, we have 2055, uh, and uh, the size the same size as the as the training. So just in parentheses, I said should say that in this um, um, uh, this video, I just consider uh, a portion of the database that's the images of of, uh, of the three mice. For a training and images of the two uh, mice for, uh, for for testing. Okay, uh, that can be can be enough for, for in our case. So just we uh, display three random images of the or for database to uh, see uh, if they are in a good form, if they are in a good shape, if we read them uh, properly. Okay, that's a simple that's what is important because sometimes when we read the images, maybe they become black or they can we convert them and we they, they, we don't fit the good image to the CNN. Okay, and then we when the result is not good, we just thinking about the the model. But with this simple uh, cell, we uh, ensure that our data or images are in in a good form. So. Here we show it. So that's uh, as I know. So that's the the, the shape of the the healthy uh, column wall. Okay, and these two, the first one and the third bar, that are the structure and texture of the of the the, the column walls with the with the mice with the uh, with the cancer. Okay, so. Now that our images are, are, are right, and we, we go further, okay? So first we normalize them, okay? Bring the, all the pixels between 0 and 1. And then we uh, convert the, also the, the uh, labels, because uh, right now it is 0 and 1. Uh, we convert them to the type of one hot encoding, okay? In one hot encoding, for each of them, it gives us, as we have two classes, we have a vector of two, and it, either it's the first one is one or the second one is one, okay? This is what we call one hot encoding. Uh, we run it, okay? And then that's the, the most important part that we, we wanted to design or CNN model, okay? So for this, Database I consider for the, the image that we have 256 um, uh, the size of the image. So I consider uh, one, two, three convolution layer, uh, four convolution layers, and uh, inside them I go and we define a range. Okay. So I said that for the first one that is the the, the convolution. Okay. We say that. Uh, then we should define the number of filters. We say that, okay, start from 32 filters, okay, and go to the 64, okay, and we define a step. 
that is 60 okay so uh, we say that this is the beginning of the range this is the end of the range and this is the step so how you can go on this uh, so we define the number of filters we also will define that we don't know if we should use the the kernel size of the 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 so we can give the range also here so we say that okay we have the range of 3 and we have the range of 5 if you wanted to try 7 by 7 or 9 by 9 you can try this as well you can add simply you can add here for example 5 7 and nine okay so you can you can add as as many as you, you want also here you can increase it to 256 and uh, and even even more 500 to work but uh, for to be simple and uh, to be fast here we just keep uh, these two in, in a range so activation can be can be relu that's good enough and for the first uh, layer as we we know in the cnn we should define the the, the shape of the input uh, that we we say that okay go and the, take the, the shape of the first images in the, the train and then we do the max pooling and we do the same for the for the second convolution so we give we give a range of the of the filters for example here i define 64 to 128 so you can increase it to for example 256 if you want and then uh, the same the value for the for the kernel so for the next one also you can define it uh, 60 64 to for example 256 and uh, the same kernel okay and then we uh, for the for the last one let me to increase it to 512 so we just uh, expand the, the the range okay uh, on on this and that's enough okay then it go to the to the flatten and for the for the dense layer so we should uh, give a number of neurons we don't know how many neurons we should give in the in the dense layer again like the the number of filters that we have in convolutions here we just define a range for the number of neurons uh, for for our dense layer and at the end the output so we have two classes that we define two uh, for and we go for the model um, compile uh, we said that okay what we, what is the uh, optimizer and one of the parameters in the optimizer that's important for for us is the learning rate okay what is the, the good learning rate that we can use? Maybe we don't know. So because of the for, uh, due, due, due to that, we just give a range. Okay, we say that okay, so consider this value or this value, or you can give a give a give a range of the of the values and it's go and we search for for all of them. Okay. And we do define the last that category calculus entropy that's good enough and the metric is accuracy okay we don't need to go for any any search on this so we run this uh, cell and now we give the range for for them and we just are now we wanted to go and and search which which are which one is the best model that we, we want among all of these parameters that we, we get so we have a, um, a library it's called cross tuner uh, and what it do it do all the search that we need here simply with one line of the code all the search that we need to go on the on the on the range that we gave it can be do but uh, by by the class tuner so if we are using the call app uh, so we need to install it okay because it's not installed uh, by by default uh, or if you are using your machine, you can also install it. But you, if you are working on your your machine, you just need to install it once, and you, then you you don't need to install it uh, several times when you you run it. We just read the the cross uh, tuner, and then we say that go and from this uh, define the random search. Okay, uh, you can use the, the grid search, you can use the random search, or any any type of the search that uh, that uh, that you want. So you can have it, and uh, you can have the list of them in the, um, in the documentation of the cross uh, tuner. Uh, you can uh, you can it, and then we say that go and uh, or uh, the build the uh, build model. So this is the function that we we wrote here, the build model, and we say that uh, go and. Uh, how you, you evaluate how you will realize this is the best model okay you will say that check their validation accuracy 
it will make the different uh, different model based on the on the in the in the range that we define and at the end it will evaluate them based on the validation accuracy say that okay the model for example number five is the best one because it has the maximum uh, validation accuracy okay and you say that how many trials so you say that uh, how many uh, how many times you wanna to to make a model okay i define it five uh, to be to be fast but you can define it 15 or uh, or 20 so it means that you will make 20 models okay with different ranges that as it's a random search it uh, defined in the range it defined one uh, randomly okay and it go and try the model and will uh, train the model on that okay if you use grid search okay you can you don't need to to define the the trial okay because it goes from the beginning of the range to the end of the, the range okay but here to be fast i use the random search okay so and then uh, we say that go and search for the x train y train and i define the it's i said that go over the three epochs it's better to increase the number of epochs here but i, I don't want to spend lots of time uh, in the in the video so i define it as a, as a tree and for validation x test by test i just run it and it randomly creates uh, models in my uh, repository okay so i run it before so it doesn't give me an uh, an model so what i can do i go and just delete this part because i wanted to show you how it search delete folder okay Uh, it says that it's not uh, empty, so it goes for different trials. You see, it uh, go for the first trial, second trial, fourth trial, and I, I run it uh, uh, before uh, and save it here. Okay, but uh, if you run it for the first time, it go and try to to find the the best one. It shows the models and it try to to best one. Okay, so to, to save the time, we, we, I don't delete it uh, uh, here. I will just go and we'll uh, from that we, we assume that it's run run the before okay and we we go and we try to get the best model on, on that with the maximum validation accuracy okay and we will summarize it it says that based on the search that it did the model that returned the the best validation accuracy was this model so you have the first convolution layer 252 number of uh, the uh, sorry uh, this is the 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 252 by 252 because it's the first convolution and we didn't use the the padding so after the convolution it reduced the size i said that it found the the best number of parameters for this layer 32 okay uh, the number of filters for this layer and for the second one uh, 96 for the third one 96 and for the for the fourth one also 96 okay uh, that's the, the 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 best model based on the on the search that we we gave on the range and the search that we, we gave to model and for the for the dense layer it also found it's 96 okay uh, and that's the, the output so now we wanted to um, run the model and we wanted to see the curve usually when you run the model so you have the uh, learning curves uh, and uh, learning curves uh, or uh, or loss curves and accuracy curves in this case we uh, we wanted to see it okay for visualizing of them we have different uh, library that we, we can use even we can use a tensor board okay to to visualize the uh, the curves but here i just use the uh, a library that's called live loss plot and it's um, when we are training the model it show the the curves here and we can see it okay we install it and then we, we read it as well okay now that's time to to run the model before running the model to avoid some overfitting that may may happen uh, and also sometimes save the time when we, we train the, the model we use something that's called uh, a function that we call early stopping okay it monitors uh, the val loss uh, validation loss or you can do validation accuracy uh, and it says that if there is no improvement after 10 
epoch it will stop it okay uh, just we say that there is no improvement and we'll stop it at the same time we we use another function that's called the model checkpoint okay the model checkpoint it's uh, the the function that help us to save the model at the best moment okay when it see an improvement okay on the on the accuracy or the validation uh, loss uh, it saved the model okay on the on our uh, on our uh, system and then later we can read this this file and uh, with that uh, we are sure that we have our model at the best moment so these these are two functions that uh, i recommend you to use it uh, every time uh, for 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 your model and then we just fit it okay for fitting the model i define the 50 epochs uh, and the byte size of the 32 and I defined the, the validation split, okay? I didn't use the test uh, database. Why I didn't use it? Because if we use it, so uh, usually we use the, uh, the, the, if we use the test for the validation as a validation, so we fine tune the model based on that, okay? And that's uh, the, at the output, we will not have the real uh, performance, okay? So, always take the validation from the training set and put your test for the final evaluation on that uh, as we saw or even from the from the images that we, we visualized that's not really complicated uh, task so you will see that it's uh, reach after a couple of epochs it reach almost at the at the top okay of the 100 percent almost because that's uh, distinguishable easily uh, and for 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 model okay and here as you have the curve also you have the have the accuracy and loss so that for the training the minimum accuracy was 96 percent the maximum was 100 percent okay and currently is 100 percent and for the validation it was 91 and the maximum was uh, was one okay so it goes at it's reached at this moment so after 10 uh, 10 epoch it will it will stop it okay so that okay we have the the best model at at, at the point okay we, we wait that it's the stop and you see that validation didn't improve and it's just save it at, at the at the moment that we had this this last okay and so we see that we we have the earliest stopping here uh so model is stopped and now for the next cell and for the last cell we just load the model that we saved from the model checkpoint okay that's the model the best moment of our model and we have we uh, we tested on the or we evaluated on the on the test data set that we didn't use for training of the model okay so then when we run it it goes for the test database it it uh, read the uh, it uh, loads the the model it uh, go for the test database and we will see that okay for the x test it gave an accuracy of the 41 percent okay so what was the the issue here uh, actually we don't we don't go uh, a lot on on this but when you split you take the validation data from the same mice uh, the, the same mouse that you used in the training so course that you will get the, the good uh, good performance and then when you come to another uh, mouse and you want to test it so the performance will not be expected as a, as a one okay so the best case in this scenario is to to have for example the training of uh, of the data uh, training data from uh, two mice uh, validation data from one mice and the test data from uh, from from one mice okay uh, one mouse and then uh, that uh, you you will see the the good uh, good good performance on on this okay or a fair performance on on that but the aim here it was not to, to take the best uh, best model it was more to show you how you can fine tune a model for for a cn okay i hope that you enjoyed this this video and try to to apply it on your your model and uh, let me know if you have any any question you can write it by uh, in the in the comments of the of the video uh, and i will try to to respond it as soon as possible 
Uh, that's enough for, for this video, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.